Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Darren Ottawa, and I'm joined by Will Granger, the Portfolio Manager for the Early Small Companies Fund. Thanks for joining us, Will. Thanks for having me. Will has close to a decade of experience in investing and joined the Early team in January 2020. Prior to joining Early, Will worked for a boutique Australian equity manager where he specialised in small caps. The Early Small Companies Fund is a concentrated portfolio of 20 to 40 stocks investing outside the ASX 100. The fund is off to a terrific start, so this is a great opportunity to hear from Will about the fund, about how he invests. Over to you, Will. Thanks, Darren, and thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, I guess the best place for us to start is, um, you know, why do we actually want to launch this product in the first place? Um, as Darren mentioned, the fund's been up and running for a little over a year now, but really the genesis of the fund predates that. You know, we've been mulling over starting a small companies fund for several years, and that's because Ailey isn't new to small cap investing. You know, the team have spent several years together successfully investing in small companies. You know, some of those ideas have been some of our best performers and our other funds and mandates. Um, so we really view this product as sort of a natural extension of the successful investing uh, we've already been doing in small caps. Um, now, there are a few key sort of tenets of the philosophy that are worth uh, touching upon. Um, for one, we're big believers in concentration. It's a very concentrated portfolio. Uh, and that's for the simple reason that we think it's rare to find great ideas. When we do find an idea that we like, we really want to own a meaningful position in it. It's why the top 15 ideas in the fund account for more than 75% of the portfolio as it stands. Um, we really think of it as, as sort of a best ideas fund. Now, those best ideas usually look for what we call undervalued quality. So this isn't a strategy about going out and finding the best businesses listed on the ASX and paying any price for them. It's about finding situations in which the quality of the business is not reflected in the price. You know, even the best business purchased at the wrong price can be a bad investment. So it's important to be very diligent on valuation. And finally, we're big believers in, in alignment through co-investment in the fund. I have a large personal stake in the fund. Uh, I don't have any side bets. Um, and I'm investing on exactly the same terms as every other investor. Now, moving over to performance. Um, look, we're really pleased with the start to the fund so far. As Darren mentioned, it's been running for a little over a year. Um, Long-term numbers are, are, are great so far. Um, but I would caution and say that, look, you know, we don't think a year is a great time frame over which to measure investment performance. You know, returns over the short term can be somewhat random. They're often more correlated with market sentiment than they are business fundamentals. And, you know, when we're looking to invest, we're taking a three to five year view. So we prefer for our investment performance to be judged over a similar time frame. Um, you know, so while I'd caution investors from taking too much comfort in these, these numbers, what I would say they can take comfort in is the fact that I'm invested alongside them, uh, as we just talked about. Um, so that's uh, a brief little overview for me and back to Darren for some questions. Right, thanks very much for that uh, overview, Will. I guess picking up on some of your comments around the genesis of the fund, the way you invest and, and what you're looking for when you when you invest. Like what is the case for small caps in the in the current market when you think about the current environment? You know, why small caps? Why now? I think the case for investing in Australian small caps is really always the same. You're getting this fantastic opportunity to go and buy some of the best businesses in Australia, these future leaders of tomorrow, just in their infancy with decades of of growth ahead of them. Uh, you're also getting access to a very deep part of the market. So we define our investment universe as anything outside of the ASX 100 with a market cap greater than 50 million. Um, there's over 700 securities within that opportunity set. And, you know, the broader your opportunity set, the greater chance you have of, of finding great investments. And then finally, it's a part of the market that's not as well covered as, as large caps. So again, there's further opportunity for mispricings. That's great, Will. Um, if we dig into this in a little bit more detail, where do you see the point of difference being in, in your strategy, your fund, the way you you apply the early process and, and your thinking and knowledge to, to the market? Now, when I think about the small cap market, you know, on one hand, you've got this fantastic opportunity that we just talked about to go and buy these, you know, future leaders of tomorrow. But on the other hand, you know, it's a bit of a wild west in small caps. There's a lot of junk in the index. So you really need a robust process of, you know, sifting through the weeds to find these really investment grade, high quality opportunities. And I think that's where our difference lies. You know, we have a very disciplined investment approach that aims to buy quality businesses and not ever pay for them. You know, it's a pragmatic, common sense approach to investing that means we stick to, to what we can understand. And we avoid a lot of that speculative 
junk in the index. This is a really good opportunity now to dig into the process in a little bit more detail. You know, I think it'd be helpful if you maybe walked a stock through the process to show, you know, how a stock makes it into the portfolio, how the process works at each stage. Thanks for that, Darren. Yeah, I'll bring up the um, investment process slide. And, you know, this slide should look very familiar to anyone who's seen Matt and Emma present. You know, it's the exact same early investment process uh, that we use for the small companies fund as well. Um, and there's four factors in the process. We start by analyzing financial strength, business quality, uh, management quality, before then coming to a conclusion as to valuation. We don't think you can value a business until you've assessed those first three criteria. And I'd also call out, we really view financial strength as sort of like the gateway hurdle at the start there. You know, it's the one thing we won't compromise on. And that's for the simple reason that, you know, you might have a business that's the highest quality, it's got the best management team, and it's the cheapest valuation. But if there's question marks over the balance sheet, then all bets are off. There's no downside protection there. So financial strength is really something we won't compromise on when we're looking at companies. Um, as for taking a, a stock through that process, you know, one I always like to use is, is Premier Investments because it fits so neatly into all of these boxes. Um, so if we look at Premier in terms of financial strength, you know, it's got perhaps the best balance sheet of, of any of its retail peers. They have around 25% of their market cap in cash and net liquid investments, so really fortress-like balance sheet there. Uh, in terms of business quality, um, you know, the lion's share of value in this business is coming from the Peter Alexander and Smiggle brands. You know, those are two fantastic businesses, really long-term uh, track records, great return on capital, and really dominant players within their, you know, respective market niches. Uh, in terms of management quality, uh, the business is presided over by Solomon Liu. Uh, he's one of Australia's most successful retail investors. He's a fantastic allocator of capital. And then in terms of valuation, the business trades on around 16 times PE, which is a discount to the market. Now, the business might be over-earning slightly, but even if you normalize for those earnings, uh, the valuation still looks really attractive. So, you know, Premier is, is a company that really ticks all of these boxes. And for that reason, it's it's a core holding in the fund. I guess the discussion of small caps is never really complete unless we add in the, the risk piece. How do you think about managing risk within small caps in general and, and the way you manage your portfolio? I think it always comes back to the investment process. Um, we've got a very strong focus on downside protection and we really achieve that through three measures. Uh, we buy businesses with strong financial strength. We buy high quality businesses with really resilient earning streams. And we make sure we don't ever pay for those businesses. And we think if you take care of you know, those three things, uh, you go a long way to protecting the portfolio from permanent capital loss. Um, you know, we've, talk, we've touched on how the small cap index, it's, there's a lot of junk in there. Um, but we really think our process naturally means that we avoid a lot of this speculative junk. You know, we don't go and buy concept stocks with no earnings. We don't buy you know, resource discovery or drug approval plays, businesses with really fatty products or opaque operating models. We really do stick to what we know and what we understand because that's what we can value. Um, you know, common sense tells us that's a great uh, strategy for the long term, but we actually went and back tested this data and we can pull up that slide. Um, we went and split the small odds index into uh, two parts. We put it into the businesses that are cash flow profitable uh, and businesses that are loss making in terms of cash flow. And as you can see from the chart, the cash flow profitable businesses comfortably outperform the index over time and vice versa for the cash flow loss makers. Uh, it's interesting to note for the loss makers, the small period of outperformance during the early 2000s tech bubble. Um, you know, these concept stocks can outperform in the short term, but history tells us it's not a winning strategy for the long term. So just by avoiding a lot of this more speculative stuff in the index, we think you can outperform, but we also think we can do even better than that by applying the early investment process and really picking the eyes out of that profitable subset. So having now covered a bit of the background to the strategy, to the fund, to the way you invest, to the way you approach the market, where, where are you seeing the big opportunities at the moment? And have you been able to shift the portfolio in any way to take advantage of those opportunities? We like to take a, a long-term view uh, at early. Um, really, the strategy is all about buying uh, quality businesses, making sure we don't have a pay and then holding on to them for the long term and letting them compound away for us. Um, so, you know, the portfolio strategy really has, um, you know, pretty low turnover. If I think back to this time last year, there's may have been four changes to the top 15 stocks in the portfolio. Um, so, you know, this isn't a strategy about going out and chasing, um, you know, the next new best idea and, and turning over the portfolio to try and find, you know, alpha in the next six months. 
um, it's really about holding on to your, your winners. And, um, you know, often the best idea is to just, again, hold on to that winner and let it do the work for you. So, um, you know, when I think about where the best opportunities are, they're in our long-term core holdings. It's businesses like News Corp, uh, Gentrac, Meta Group, uh, Premier Investments. You know, these are some really high quality businesses, which we think the market continues to undervalue and which we'd love to own for the next decade. Well, you talked about winners a moment ago and talking about being able to hold on to those winners for as long as possible. You know, when we think about small caps, sometimes those winners move to such a size that they're no longer within the the, the investment universe. How do you manage that in the way you approach the fund? Good question, because it can be a bit of an issue for small cap managers. But, you know, the way we've structured the fund really allows us to maximise the value of our winners. So while we can't buy businesses that are already in the ASX 100, uh, if one of our companies does graduate into the 100, we can continue to hold that business and trade in it. Um, you know, however, there is uh, a limit to that. Um, you know, the fund can only own a maximum of 20% in ASX 100 names. Uh, so that ensures that, you know, the majority of the fund remains invested in small companies. You know, we really like this structure because it allows us, again, to maximise the value of those winners while simultaneously also ensuring that we stay to our stay true to our small cap mandate. One final question. How do you see investors using this strategy in a portfolio? When you think about most Australian investors, you know, they're full to the gills with Aussie large caps, they own CBA, BHP, uh, Wesies, Telstra. And don't get me wrong, they've been great performers over the long term. But, you know, a really good small cap manager can give you exposure to, you know, an amazing Australian business that you've never heard of that's just in its infancy and has decades of growth ahead of it. Um, the issue with small caps, however, though, is that the index uh, isn't a great index. You know, there's a lot of speculative junk in there. Um, you know, if you actually go and look at the performance of the small odds accumulation index versus the ASX 100, it's actually materially underperformed the 100 uh, over the long term. So uh, if you do want exposure to the space, you really need to find, you know, a great active manager who can sift through the weeds and find those really high quality investment grade opportunities. Thanks, Will. That was a great insight into your fund and to the market in general. Now, for those watching, if you require any more information on the fund or if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get into contact with your Magellan representative. For those who require CPD accreditation for this presentation, please follow the link below. Thank you all for joining us and thanks again for your time, Will. Thank you.